Can you all tell me why Oracle Rack has like three scan IPs? Why not more? Or do you think it's more than enough? Or something else? What do you think? Put your answers below in the comments and we'll chat over there. Meanwhile, let us start the show. Welcome back guys and as usual I am forced to give the intro for this show. So welcome back, please send your queries to support at dbagenesis.com and please spread my vision to reach every single DBA on this planet and spread our DBA Genesis videos as much as possible. That's a perfect intro, I think so and you all also believe that it's a perfect intro. And let us start over today's episode with the first question of the day. And meanwhile, I would like to apologize once again because I have so many comments and emails in my inbox that it is becoming right now impossible for me to respond to each and every email, but I'm trying my best still. And in case if I missed one of your emails, so hold on for some time, I would definitely get back to you. That being said, let us start our today's episode with the first question of the day. I feel our production database is running slow. Can I increase SGA by 5 GB? This is one of the problems with a lot of DBAs and I want to say it straight on the face. Even if you feel bad, that's okay. <laughs> so guys, this is called assumption based thinking like you assume that if I change something, something might happen uh, without any perfect or proper data. And this is what I'm scared of. So these kind of things like without knowing that really the database is slow and is it really slow because of the instance or is it slow because of uh, probably you're not using index or maybe your database is really slow because there are no stats. There can be thousand variables to this problem. So deciding that your database is slow and assuming that it is because of the uh, instance and that's why you want to increase the RAM. I hate assumption based thinking where you're assuming things and thinking that it will be okay. I mean, if you have like a lot of RAM, which you're not using and you want to use it, go ahead and add, I mean, add the RAM to the Oracle instance, but I 100% believe if the problem is somewhere else inside the database, still it won't make any difference by adding the RAM to the Oracle instance. So instead, like what you should do in this kind of situation, you have to first look at the, I mean, if your doubt is towards the Oracle instance, then you should look into the load profile area of the AWR report. Check the AWR report instance load profile, that's the correct name. And in the instance specific percentages, if you see that the percentages is below 90% or actually below 80%, that's when you think or that's when it is one area where you need to tune the Oracle instance. And one of the ways of tuning the Oracle instance is to increase the RAM right so no assumption based thinking and please keep away from this kind of ideas where you are thinking assuming that this might be the issue no you are a dba like as we all are into this technical field we cannot work on assumptions we need to have real data and without real data i would be the first one to smash you in case if you talk like this all right so no assumptions and you cannot increase RAM just like that. If you have it and you just want to increase your wish, but if the problem is somewhere inside the SQL query or the database or the storage or the network level or some other location, then even if you increase the RAM, it won't help your situation, right? That being said, let's move on to the next question. What is the difference between Oracle database and Oracle Exadata? Oracle database, normal database, standalone database, and now you also have multi-tenant architecture. You install it, use it, simple, sweet, straightforward. And I guess the person who asked this question, you are already aware of Oracle database, but let's talk about Oracle Exadata. Exadata is like pre-built rack machines. Now you don't have to kind of like 
install or set up Oracle Rack, you can buy the hardware where you have the software pre-installed, plug and play and use it. Very simple, straightforward. So what happens is in these pre-built racks, okay, let us first talk about normal rack. Now, if you want to install normal rack, what all you have to do? You need to have, like, first of all, you need to have multiple nodes. And let's take you're setting up two node rack, node one, node two, and you have the storage, right? So you need to configure like three machines, uh, like node one, node two, and storage. And you have to configure the network between these uh, machines, the public network, private net network, scan IP, VIPs, and so on, right? And then you have to set up the Oracle ASM, you have to set up the Oracle Grid infrastructure, then install the Oracle database, and that's when you set up the Oracle Rack, right? I mean, so many steps, perfect. Now, when it comes to Oracle Exadata, the beauty is it's a pre-built rack along with the hardware. So you are actually buying a hardware where already rack is set up. You just plug your application into the pre-built rack, done. Like you can buy your two node Exadata, four node, eight node, I think the max one is 16 nodes, which is known as, um, full exadata right so you have quarter full half different variations in the exadata boxes so you purchase this entire hardware into your office plug play no dba required i mean technically you need a dba by the way this was for the client and so definitely client would need a dba in order to set up all the stuff but kind of like when compared to a normal rack setup the steps are very less so you just plug your application, done, very simple. The beauty about Exadata boxes is you connect the public and private network. You just put those networks, network cables into the Exadata box, set up the IP addresses and done, forget about it. Make sure your application is pointing to the scan IP and it will take care of everything else automatically, right? Of course, as a DBA, you would have the options to kind of like change the uh, services and other stuff inside Exadata but the beauty is like for the setup of the Oracle rack you don't need to have that much of headache in terms of building rack from scratch right I think you get the difference between Oracle database and Exadata so Exadata is automation or pre-built rack machines where you can buy use it right I think that should be the fair difference between Oracle database and Exadata. That being said, let's move on to the next question. How to load data into another database from Oracle database? Okay, so this one is very simple. See, you have multiple ways. If like the another database, I'm not sure how to load data from another database from Oracle database. So this another database, is it the same Oracle database or some other vendor it depends so if it is same oracle to oracle database you just export import or you have uh, i think export import is the best way right and you can also use transportable table spaces also in oracle but when it comes to oracle to some other database vendor probably microsoft sql server or mysql or any other database vendor the best part is every database actually allows you to export the data into flag files so you export the data into flat files or CSV files and use those files to be imported into the target databases. So also, as like I mentioned, every database allows you to export files into flat files or CSV files. The same way all the database vendors also allow you to import the flat files and CSV files. So the best way is if the database vendors are completely different. So let's say Oracle to Microsoft SQL Server. So from Oracle, you export it into the um, flat files or CSV files and then import it into the other database. Very simple, straightforward. That being said, let's move on to the next question of the day. How can I get username of the user that inserted a record in a table? First of all, it's not possible. It's not straightforward. You can't get those details easily. But in case if this is required by one of your applications, I mean, I really don't know why would you need this one. But in case if you still need this kind of information, I would suggest you should set up triggers 
inside your Oracle database. So whenever somebody is inserting records into a particular table, which is your most important table, what you do is you run this trigger on record insert on a particular table. The trigger will insert the session details into a separate table. So that's the beauty about, I call them history tables. So you maintain a history log table and you have triggers inside your database. So any action that is happening onto one table, you insert a record into the history log table and that's where you can go and check all the data. Meanwhile, I can give you an example. So there was one client I was working earlier and on this client, uh, they had the payroll database. And in the payroll database, anyone who was updating the salary of any employees into the employee table, the trigger used to capture those uh, session details like which user from which machine, which IP address and all those details into a history table. So that way it was easy for anyone to go and check who updated the salary of the employee, right? So you can have or maintain these kind of triggers uh, which will help you to kind of like figure out uh, and kind of like have an history table which will act as the log for your whatever stuff you want to track, right? That being said, let's move on to the last question of the day. Query running slow post upgrade to 18C. Guys, I mean, see, there is no straightforward answer to this one. It It depends on what kind of query and okay so rather than blaming oracle 18c because i feel like uh, this question is a clear blame like okay i upgraded to 18c and query running slow so why did i upgrade to 18c or is 18c bad nothing like that you have to understand that when you are upgrading the oracle database along with the upgradation of the database the oracle optimizer also becomes more smart right because with every version of the oracle database the oracle optimizer is is also becoming smart so now the oracle optimizer has a different view of the database and different way of executing the queries it depends that probably the way the 18c optimizer is looking at your database is different when compared to that one of the previous database maybe 12c database right so in this case what i would suggest is it's better you gather these stats inside the database i think that will help you so once you gather these stats and probably rerun the query it should be perfectly fine happens it's very normal if this is the first time you have encountered this kind of problem it is genuinely very normal and it happens with all the DBAs whenever they perform the upgrades and it takes little time for the database to become normal. All right. So if you go and probably rebuild the indexes and gather stats inside the database. So most of the times it works and kind of like you can also recompile the invalid objects inside the database. Of course, that is also one of the uh, post upgrade steps that you must execute inside the database, right? So if you recompile the invalid objects also, still the database performance will become normal over time. It happens, it's very normal because see, look at, of course your Oracle database is being upgraded, base tables are being upgraded. So optimizer is also being upgraded, right? So optimizer has more uh, variables now to execute the query. So sometimes it might become uh, problematic for new optimizer to run with the same performance as the old optimizer. So the best way is have the stats gathered, look at the indexes, check the um, invalid objects inside the database, done. That's it. All right. That being said, guys, let's move on to the most exciting part of this show. And that is the bonus questions. Welcome back guys, Arun here again and I have this bonus question which I've selected exclusively for this episode and I get it asked almost every day in and day out. The question is, what is my recommendation to set up a practical lab at home? I mean to practice Oracle of course, but my actually, uh, I mean I don't have a suggestion for practical lab but what I would suggest is 
the system that you are using is the biggest problem. So most of the DBAs I see that they don't have a good system to crack this. Like some of the DBAs who send me email, they say like they have a system with 4 GB RAM. Now with 4 GB RAM, do you think you will be able to practice Oracle on your system? It's very hard. So what I personally recommend is my favorite machine in case if you want to practice anything in related to Oracle database, Oracle Rack, Golden Gate, any of these technologies, I would suggest you should have i7 or above processor and minimum 16 GB of RAM and I think 200 to 500 GB of free hard disk space and that is more than enough. This is the ideal machine which I recommend to all the DBAs who want to practice any of the database technology whether it is standalone database, whether it is Oracle Rack, whether it is Oracle Golden Gate, any of those technologies you can execute in such a good configuration system. Now the beauty is once you have the good configuration system, I always recommend you to practice on Oracle VirtualBox because you don't need a license for Oracle VirtualBox and it is 100% free. So inside VirtualBox, you set up multiple virtual machines. Now some of you say and come back to me asking like, Arun, is it possible to set up Oracle Rack on VirtualBox? Of course, like it's very simple, like we have done it, people do it. Is it possible to set up Oracle Golden Gate configuration on VirtualBox? Yes. We have done it, people have done it, and other DBAs are doing it. So what I would recommend is first have a good configuration system. The second is learn virtualization. And by the way guys, before I talk about something else, I want to inform all the viewers that we have a free VirtualBox course on our website, which you can go ahead and enroll into. It's 100% free. I'll, link the, I'll put the link below in the description and you guys can go ahead and enroll into the course. So have the great system, which is i7 processor, 16 GB RAM and minimum 500 GB hard disk free. The second is have virtual box setup. And the third one is learn Linux. Understand 99.9% .9 of the servers in the world are running on Linux. Like nobody's using windows. And I mean, most of us know how buggy windows is, right? So servers and all those platforms or the big servers, multi terabyte servers always run on Linux operating system. So you have to learn Linux. Like, I mean, I can't stress how hard it will be for a DBA who does not know Linux. Okay. I mean, that has to be one of your primary skills. And then you try to figure out which database technology you want to learn. Do you want to learn standalone database? You want to learn Oracle Rack? You want to learn Golden Gate or any other thing in this world? Like to be a DBA, this is mandatory. First, you start from scratch, have a good system, learn virtualization. We have a free course on our website. Go ahead and en enroll into that course if you haven't done it. And the third one is the Linux. And guys, I mean, that being said, I would still recommend you all to send me emails to support at dbgenesis.com. I 100% know that I, ha I haven't replied to most of the emails, but still, I request you all to send me, I mean, continue to send me email, send your, uh, or put your comments below these videos. And meanwhile, I'll take a leave. I'll see you all in the next episode. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.